Thinking the only way that you can get your baby to sleep is by letting them cry it out in their room all night? Wrong. Cry it out is not your only option. Hi, I'm Jen Seen. I am a pediatric sleep consultant, postpartum doula, and here to help you know your options when you're thinking about sleep training. So a lot of families have the notion that cry it out and sleep training are one and the same. That if you want to sleep train your child, the only way to do so is by having them cry it out. And that is just not true. I have three children myself, and while I'm a sleep consultant and I know the value of sleep and the importance of sleep training for us personally, I did not do cry it out with any of my children because I just, as a mom, couldn't do it. In my heartstrings, it just wasn't something that I knew that I could reliably be able to do consistently. So I didn't even want to try it and confuse my children, put that stress on me, and just not have it be a good experience for everyone. So know that cry it out is not your only option. There are actually three other options that you can use that are going to take varying times um, to be able to see the success that you might see if you use the cry it out option but they are all just as reliable, just as tried and true as cry it out. So I'm gonna start this by saying cry it out is an option if that feels right and comfortable for you. Some families might have done other methods of sleep training and they have found that they were not successful and that they did have to move to a cry it out option. And that is perfectly fine. I know that it is a reliable way to help your child learn some independent sleep skills and be able to fall asleep on their own. So know that I'm not saying that it is not a good option. I'm just saying that it may not be the best option for some families. However, if you are going to do a true cry it out option, know that that would mean doing your full bedtime routine, putting your little one into their crib, walking out of the room and not returning until morning. True cry it out has no check-ins, has no going in, none of that. So know if you are going that route that you will need to do that consistently until your child is able to fall asleep independently without a lot of tears. So diving into what the three options are. The first one is the Ferber method. So this is also very, um, heard of. Sometimes it can be confused with cry it out, but it is not because it includes timed check-ins. So the way that this works is you would do your full bedtime routine, put them into the crib, and then walk out of the room. You're going to check in at certain intervals, 3, 5, 10, 15, 20. No more than 20 minutes. So once you reach that 20 minute mark, you would continue to do the check-ins every 20 minutes until they fall back, until they fall asleep initially or they fall back to sleep. So this way you are going in for checks, you're doing very short, maybe 30 second checks, making sure that they are not sick, they are not wet, they are not hurt before you leave the room again for them to then be able to figure out how to fall asleep on their own. The second method is the chair method. So in this method, you would do their full bedtime routine, put them into the crib, and then sit in a chair or on the floor next to them, providing them with support as they're falling asleep in their crib. A couple days later, you'd move to the middle of the room. So you would get up, provide support at the crib for about 30 seconds before you return to the middle of the room, getting up as many times as needed and returning to the middle of the room until they fall asleep. After a couple of days of that, then you would move to all the way across the room, as far from the crib as you can get, doing the same thing, helping them return into your space. And then there does come a point after doing that for a couple of days where you do do your full bedtime routine, put them in, walk out of the room completely, and they fall asleep on their own. This way is really nice because you're providing that support. You're in there and you're weaning off that support. So if you do a lot of feeding or rocking or walking to help your child fall asleep, this is going to be a method that's going to feel right to you or it could feel right to you um, because you're still there to provide that support, but you're weaning away that support slowly. And the third option is the pick up put down. So this is going to be the option that's going to take the longest and it's going to be the most work for you, Um, but this is really nice for families that might bed share or co-sleep and have done that for a while, but now are looking to have their child be a little bit more independent and sleep in their own sleep space. Because once your child, you do your routine, put them in, as they become upset, you pick them up, walk them around the room, help them get to calm again before returning them back into the crib. 
So that could take a lot of times before they are able to actually be put in the crib and fall asleep. And you would continue to do that consistently until they are able to go in, do longer stretches in the crib before you have to pick them up. And then it gets to the point where you don't even have to pick them up and they just stay in the crib and are able to fall asleep. So of those three methods, um, there are actually the four methods, but there are so many other ways. Do not feel like your only choice is to cry it out or to never sleep again. Please, please, please look into the other methods. If you are interested in knowing more, I would be happy to do videos about each method individually and get really dive in deeper about what they entail. So if that's if you're interested in that, pop it in the comments below. Um, and I will definitely think about doing more drawn out videos on each of the options. But no, sleep feels so deeply personal when you're not getting enough. And when your child's not getting enough, it feels like you could be doing something wrong. Some children are just born knowing how to sleep well, and some children are not. Some children are born and they're really motorically driven and they are rolling and crawling and walking super early. Some children are not. They need a little bit of help. They need a PT or an OT. So just know that sleep is one of those things that if you need support, please do not feel shy. Please do not feel like you cannot ask for help. There are so many sleep resources out there, me being one of them. And I'm so glad you're here to know um, some and gain some sleep education. So any comments, any questions, pop them below. Good luck with your sleep training. It will go fantastic.